Pokey Rogue is a game where you go through 200 floors of endless battling all the way up until the point you fight Eternatus. Now during these 200 floors, there's actually a rival system. And whether you play as a boy or girl, you're gonna end up fighting Ivy or Finn. So in my case, I always play as a boy, so I end up fighting Ivy all the time. And I thought what better challenge to do than to try and beat Pokey Rogue as Ivy. Let me explain. So the rivals in this game go through a very specific Pokemon build system every time you encounter them. To not overload you with too much information, I'm only gonna explain the beginning of how rivals work. And once we add more Pokemon to our team, I'll explain that just throughout the video. So to start off, the rival actually starts with a random starter Pokemon and a random regional bird. And from there, their team gets stronger and better, all the way up until the point where they add the legendary Rayquaza to their team. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm actually gonna start the run with Rayquaza and a starter, Charmander in this case, because he's the only Pokemon I can actually hit the 10 point limit on Poke Rogue with. And from there, we are going to track the progress of our rival, Finn, since we're playing as Ivy, and add Pokemon to our team, similar how our rival would. So let's see if we could beat Poke Rogue as our rival, more specifically, Ivy. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Nerd Comedy Gaming. I'm excited to do this challenge. I've been wanting to do it for so long, but I had to wait until I hatched a Rayquaza so I could actually do it. Because, I mean, the chance of you getting a Rayquaza is, like, near impossible. So you know you pretty much have to start the run with the Rayquaza. And we had to build from there. And I did say in the intro, I'll kind of explain as we go along how everything works and how it is the way a rival works. So right now when we fight Ivy on floor eight, we're actually gonna be dealing with uh, only two Pokemon, her random starter Pokemon or her ran and her random regional bird. And then after that, she'll add a different Pokemon and so on and so forth. And I'll kind of explain it as we get there. So it's just not too much information and too overwhelming for you guys, like right off rip. You know what I mean? We don't, I don't want to overwhelm you guys with info. But right now, we got our starter. We got our Rayquaza. We need a regional bird, specifically. And then the other Pokemon, other three that are added to the team, have a bit of a different criteria that hopefully we can get on the team in some way, shape, or form. We'll, we'll see. We'll have to see. Fletchling. Is Talonflame the regional bird of that gen? I think it is. Let me double check. But I think we got... Talonflame as our first regional bird option. We'll, we'll catch it. So Buddy is a regional bird. I just looked it up and I didn't even process that Hoot Hoot is actually a regional bird. So we just killed another regional bird option, but it's okay. Fletchling is better and I don't want to kill it. I think I might kill it if I hit it with Ember because it's only level three. So please just get in the ball, buddy. I'd really appreciate you. You're wasting my time. Please get in the ball. If you kill my Charmander, I'm going to be very mad at you, Fletchling. Thank you. Okay, we got Fletchender. That's the regional bird of that generation. I didn't realize Hoot Hoot was a regional bird. I don't I don't think of Hoot Hoot as regional in my in my tiny brain. But I guess Buddy is. Congrats to him. So we got our regional bird, we got our starter, and we got Rayquaza. We're technically cheating because we have three instead of the two Pokemon. But it might be a little bit frustrating to get a regional bird later, so we'll just we'll rock it for now. It's it's okay, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you know what I'm saying? So we'll rock it for now. And let's, we're not allowed to catch another Pokemon until after Floor 8 when we beat Ivy for the first time is what I'm kind of setting my mindset on. So let's head over there and defeat her and then we can catch the next Pokemon and it can explain how that one works. And we start our Poke Rogue run trying to see if we can beat Classic Mode as Ivy. I'm super excited for this run. I've wanted to do it for so long, but never could without Rayquaza. And this time around, we're actually going to be focusing on the rival battles a lot more often than other encounters that happen. So let's just head into our first encounter with Finn. So now we've made it to Floor 8 with Rival Finn. This is the first time I've ever seen him. And I just, I haven't even paid attention to my own character model. I always play as a as a boy so I, I always see ivy so it's kind of funky to be ivy on my end this time and i swat the rivals for the fun of it fit loki he got that all and he has a chimchar so that's his random starter not much of a problem for us to deal with i'm gonna be honest that's light work we can get through that pretty easily let's see what his regional bird is gonna be padov also a very easy bird regional bird bro talon flame for the win against Put dove here, buddy. Get, yo, Finn, you're off to a bad start, buddy. 
Ivy's gonna take this for sure. So now that we defeated him, he's gonna get a third Pokemon by the next time we fight him on floor 25 after I hatch some eggs, which is a perfect time for me to explain how this works. It's time to explain what the third Pokemon will be that is added to Finn's team when we encounter him on floor 25. The way this works is Poke Rogue actually goes based off a of BST system. BST, if you don't know what that means, is base stat system. Basically the base level stats a Pokemon can have. So for the third Pokemon, it could be any Pokemon above the BST of 450, but does not have an evolution. This can be Pokemon like Skarmory, Milk Tank, or even Dracovich. Now to come across this type of Pokemon, it's pretty rare. So it will definitely take some time to even find an option for the team, if any at all. But luckily for now, we're able to grab ourselves a very early berry pouch, which is clutch at times and actually a replacement for someone on our team. So I actually found a Rukadi, which to be honest, I'm gonna catch him. Um, I think a Corviknight would probably be better. It also just gives us more variety on the team versus another fire type. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rock that um instead of Talonflame. I like Talonflame a lot and probably more than Corviknight. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not fully sure. But I definitely would wanna swap up the team and just have a little bit of a variation with Rukadi, you know what I'm saying? So let's let's get Rukadi and we'll release Fletchling. I'm sorry, buddy, we'll get you out of here. Okay, can you relax? We're gonna, I'm gonna release him and we'll get this Corviknight on the team. Sick, sick. Hopefully that's gonna be the right decision at the end of the day for us, but I think it will. I think it'll be absolutely worth it. Lechonk, get out of here. Let me, I'm sorry, buddy. You were, you were here with us for a little bit and you did great. Goodbye, Fletchling. Be gone. And now we only get, we're back down to three. We're back down to three, still looking for the fourth Pokemon to join the squad. After adding Rukadi to our team, we were able to just continue like normal, demolishing through the floors. Nothing special really happened for us. We did fight a Magikarp, which is a Pokemon option after the floor 25 battle, but I didn't want to catch him early without my explainer first and when the rival was allowed to get one too. So we got no luck in finding a new team member. Instead, let's find out what Finn has in store for us on floor 25. Well, we've made it to floor 25 without being able to get our fourth Pokemon to the team, but it's okay. Maybe it makes it feel like it's a bit more even in the route we're going with against our uh, our rival right now. So that's okay. We're 3-3. Three, three. He has a Monferno. We'll see what his third Pokemon is, which I should have already explained if my content creator brain has done it correctly. I should have already explained very easily um, what it is or how it works. So... He has chosen a Tatsugiri. That's a very interesting Pokemon for the choice. Okay, and if I if I remember correctly, it doesn't say on the website. I think Tatsugiri has a chance to be swapped out later for a different type of Pokemon. I'm not fully sure, because sometimes I've had it where this game will have a certain Pokemon here on like floor 25 or maybe the fourth Pokemon choice. And it'll swap for something stronger or something different out of nowhere. Um, it's happened before. I don't know why it does that. I don't see anything on the website specifically on it. We'll just have to wait and see if that happens. So, Now that we beat Finn, we can talk about the next Pokemon option that is allowed for the team. Once again, it is based on BST, but works slightly different than before. This time around, we're actually allowed to have a Pokemon with a BST of 450 or above, but has to be a Pokemon from an evolutionary line, which is why I mentioned Magikarp earlier because he counted. So as of right now, I need to find two new team members, both with a BST of 450, but one cannot evolve and the other one can. And luckily enough, we actually found the new Pokemon for us pretty quickly. So according to Poke Rogue, Magikarp is one of the possible Pokemon into Gyarados that could be added as the fourth Pokemon slot so that we would see on floor 55 you know what i mean so hey that's actually pretty fire that means we get to catch us ourselves a magic carp i'm super down for a magic carp i mean gyarados is sick give me that uh it's a magic we should just be able to pokeball him and we got our fourth team member it's still different from what would normally be that's so sexy gonna give that to charmeleon um 
it's still very different than what we would normally see as the 25th Pokemon or third Pokemon choice on floor 25. But at least we got him now. We can still get that floor 25 Pokemon and still get uh, two more Pokemon. Yeah, two more Pokemon total. The one from floor 25 and the one that would end up being after floor 95 would be our last Pokemon choice. So we got a, we, we got a bit to go through and I'm excited. This is pretty cool. As of right now, honestly, we're looking pretty good with the team we're rocking right now. Of course, there are plenty of better options to add to the team, but I'm feeling really good so far. And luckily enough, we will continue to feel pretty good because we actually picked up a key item for classic runs. We got the map. It's not specifically anything I really care about too much specific in this run, you know what I'm saying? We got a Rocket Grunt though, we're gonna be dealing with Team Rocket. That's cool, I can destroy Giovanni, he's light work, but I mean, I guess it can keep us out of regions we don't really care to go back. Like, I don't really want to go back to water areas for sure. Um, you know what I mean? I can't really be bothered. Probably stay out of that. Maybe like mountainous regions because we're going to have three flying types on the team. Which we might need to swap Magikarp out for. I mean, a water flying type is awesome. But we're going to have a water flying type, a dragon flying type, and a fire flying type. And then just a normal flying type or flying steel. Ooh. We got a lot of birds. We got a lot of flyers. We're gonna have to swap that on the squad. I think Magikarp might have to get out of here because we can't really swap the other three. So we're gonna have to try and find something better than uh, Gyarados, which I'm sure we can find, but it might be a little difficult to do so. It is kind of funny that our team is going to be four flying types so far. One awful encounter can literally end it all for us. It would be so embarrassing. We definitely need to start looking and hoping we find something better than Gyarados, which there are plenty of options. We can get ourselves something like a Garchomp, Dragonite, or even Electivire. And we did have a map decision to make, so I decided to go towards the Power Plant, which has an insane amount of electric Pokemon, which you would think after telling myself we got four flying types, I would not want to go there, but hear me out. We haven't gotten Charizard yet, so he's a strong little Charmeleon right now, and I also wanted some route variety compared to most of my Poke Rogue runs without a map just to feel more adventurous. Which I do end up getting my Charizard on floor 47, so we really were in the danger zone, but I believed in the team. We didn't find anything special on these floors, but we did find Clements for the first time. That's pretty cool. I've actually never fought him and always forget he's a gym leader. Then we end up in the slums, which is primarily steel type Pokemon, but it gave us the next Pokemon for our team. I found our first Pokemon that would be our Pokemon for the floor 25 one technically. And it's Klefki, <laughs> which is kind of funny because I've always wanted to have Klefki on a team because it's a it's a pair of keys, but I want it to counter um, Eternatus so bad because I think it would be so funny. So honestly, grabbing Klefki is actually really cool and it's, it's gonna freaking have Draining Kiss. So this is gonna be really annoying to try and get. But we're gonna catch this pair of keys and we're up to the five Pokemon. We we can get, yeah, we have five Pokemon, which is awesome. I still wanna swap out Gyarados. Not really the Pokemon I want on the team right now with the amount of flying times we got going on. But honestly, I think it's looking pretty cool so far. And what's actually even cooler about us catching that Clef Key is the battle right after that is against Finn. So we get to show off our team of four. Wait, our team of five against his four? Oh, that's right, because technically I have Rayquaza, so... Yeah, 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 I was like... I was kind of tripping for a sec. He's going to swap out, surely, right? I'm going to crunch, yeah, yeah, he's going to swap out. That's that's much better. He swapped it to Tatsugiri, though. I'm just going to keep my Gyarados in, that's fine. So, we're going to see what fourth Pokemon he decides to add to his team. Um, we have all the Pokemon that we should have up to this point, technically. I do know the Rayquaza is the iffy one, but hey... He's on the team. He's there. It's chilling. Drill pack. Uh, we'll just get rid of Pluck. Nice. Corvusquire. And then Flash Cannon on Klefki? Yeah, sure, buddy. Sure. Um, I think Flash Cannon, though, is a charge-up move. So, like, you have to, like, wait around. So, maybe it's not a move I actually in particular like. But it's okay. My bad, Unfezza. I didn't know you were chill like that, buddy. I didn't know Buddy was chill like that. That was kind of rude. But we're rocking our team. Honestly, this is kind of cool. 
And also a little surprising how it's a bit harder. Ooh, a Ponyard as your fourth Pokemon, Finn. It's a little bit harder to get the Pokemon that we're trying to look for. It's actually a lot smaller of a list um, than I thought it would be, interestingly enough. I thought the list would be a little bit larger for the Pokemon varieties I can choose uh, or get, but that's not the case, which is kind of interesting. But we'll see how this run goes. I think... I think so far, even with these just just these five Pokemon, I think we secure ourselves up to Eternatus. I'm going to be honest, but we'll see if anything goes wrong. And after beating Finn on 455, we were actually able to unlock our next Pokemon slot, which is actually the same type of Pokemon as beforehand, the BST of 450 or more, and is a part of an evolutionary line. And so we were on the lookout for a Gyarados swap and another similar Pokemon to Gyarados to add to the team. But for now, we just continue dominating through these floors, trying to see what we could find. I did find a few Pokemon options technically, but I didn't go for them. There was a Torterra and a Meganium, which we could have swapped for Charizard, but I knew that would not be the right choice as well as tropius which we could have swapped for klefki but i didn't like that either so for now we kept going and actually went towards a cave route because i wanted to try my hardest to get us towards areas that can get us cool pokemon options like the wasteland region for dragon type pokemon but for now we actually found our gyarados swap option in the caves so we found the pokemon that we can actually swap our gyarados with and that's Ursaring. Now, normally, I honestly probably wouldn't do this, but at the chance that we... Okay, never mind. Ursaring proved that it can slam Gyarados. At the chance, the chance that we get uh, an Elite Four that has some electric Pokemon or something, or something ridiculous that happens, we might get slammed by electric slash rock types. And this thing might kill itself. Okay. It's not killing itself yet. Please stay in the ball. Please stay in the ball. Please stay in the ball. So we might as well swap just for that safety. And also, I mean, we can... Earth Rings, all right. I mean, Thrash, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we can use it. It's also a tanky Pokemon. So we can have it kind of just tank shots if we ever need fodder to, like, swap into. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I think that is worth... So we'll get rid of Gyarados on the team, sadly, and we'll bring Ursaring in. Let me heal it up just a little bit, and then we'll rare candy somebody here. And then goodbye, Gyarados, and now we got Ursaring because Teddy Ursa was an option. So we got that. We basically need another Pokemon that's in the tier of Klefki, and we have our team of six, which is honestly huge that we've gotten it this early. Uh, it the best? We'll give it to Corvin. I can use it the best. And then from there, we're chilling. And then from there, we pretty much play unless we find something better. Of course. See you later, Gyarados. You were useful while you lasted. I would love to keep you, but sadly, you're just not worth the risk of being... Honestly, us being in this cave is already scary. I didn't want to come here, but to get to the Badlands and maybe something better, like a crazy dragon type or something in the future, we had to go this route. So we're already risking enough. You know what I'm saying? Even though, I guess, technically, Gyarados would have been useful here. That's besides the point, guys. Just forget what I'm talking about. And we actually are fighting our rival again. I think he might swap. We're going to just Oblivion win. Yeah. Still has the Tatsugiri. Cool. Okay, we should be fine here. We'll see what his fifth Pokemon is. I think, actually, Rayquaza shows up at this point. No, Rayquaza, I think, is 145. Actually, I'm pretty sure. Close combat is crazy, buddy. So, we got our rival again. We're both 5-5. Five, five. You know what I'm saying? Technically, we're even, but he should have a different Pokemon instead of Rayquaza, and then I have the Rayquaza. Unless he gets Rayquaza now, and then he gets Mega Rayquaza next. I don't remember. We'll find out here in a sec. But, Finn, you're just, you know... You're getting slammed, buddy. The Unpheasant pick was crazy, bro. The Unpheasant pick... I'm gonna be honest with you, Finn. That wasn't the pick. That wasn't the move. Oh, so he has King Gambit, which I think would have been... That would have been my magic heart swap like if i found a ponyard i would have been able to swap it out of my magic carp gyarados option and my earth ring would have been that that's what that would have been uh and a florges so he has am i tripping he's supposed to have one touch so he has the tatsugiri and then yeah he has the two okay no no i am tripping i am tripping ignore me I, he, he has his i was like wait is his team different from my team technically 
No, he has his Forges, with, which is his second evolution option. Um, what, what are you? Does Finn have different text than Ivy? I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. I've always skipped it. I want to take that so bad, but not on this style of run. I would like to, but we got. I want to stay tr stay true to the Ivy run. We got to stay true to the Ivy run. We got one more Pokemon left, another Clef Key style Pokemon, so that could be like an Absol or whatever, and hopefully we get something soon asap explode explode i don't think counts no yeah explode doesn't count um so we'll let's destroy these guys real quick it's really funny going back and seeing my process through this run because i could tell i was getting confused myself i could have kept gyarados and ursaring together which would have completed the team of six and just later swap out gyarados but i'm an idiot so here we are so now we're actually on the lookout for our final pokemon for the team to complete our six we travel through the mountain biome which we absolutely destroyed team rocket and giovanni i mean he's pretty light work this time around compared to his rematch on floor 165 and after the mountains we actually are taken towards the volcano region where we find our final pokemon for the team i found our last pokemon and it is mag mortar not the pokemon i would want off rip because i mean we do have a fire type but at the same time i don't mind it too much you know what i'm saying i don't i don't i don't mind it too much what's my lowest move okay crunch my kill okay no we're good so we'll catch bros and we'll have another fire type hopefully we can swap it for something better than a mag mortar that's my hope um but as of right now mag mortar is gonna be our guy and that's you know Honestly, you can't complain too much when having such a cool Pokemon. But if it decides to stay in the ball, please, Magmortar. And honestly, if we find another Pokemon, will we even have <laughs> the the balls to catch another Pokemon? Probably not. So as of right now, it's looking like our team is Charizard, Ursaring, Klefki, Rayquaza, Corviknight, Magmortar. Kind of sad on the mag mortar, but it's fine. We'll do we'll do just fine with it. I'm sure we'll do absolute wonders. We got a Dynamax band. That's huge. Honestly, that could be game changer. We can get the max mushrooms on Charizard, and I don't know who else off the top of my head. Um. type of Pokemon to evolve wait what Pokemon needs that to evolve I didn't even think about turning Ursaring into Ursa Luna that quite li that didn't cross my mind at all bro but that is so awesome Wait, that is actually so cool. We're going to swap that for... I kind of want to play rough uh, just in case for Eternatus. So I'm actually going to do Thrash. But I... Earth's Luna completely slipped my mind that that's even a choice. Like 100% slipped my mind. Also, Arcanine's a choice to swap out Magmortar or... Um... Ursa Luna, that's definitely a choice, but I think we're probably better off with our team. So we can get Dynamax, potentially, and that's big. That's big. I'd honestly, I, I want Mega because Ivy has a Mega Rayquaza. That's what I really want in my life, but I think we might have to go without it, which kind of sucks, but we'll figure it out now that we actually have our full team let me give you guys a full refresher on how it all went down since i feel like stuff like this is still very confusing even with me explaining periodically so we started our run with charmander which became charizard and rayquaza which counts as our floor 8 and floor 145 pokemon slots then we got our corviknight for our other floor 8 slot as the regional bird and then after that, we have Klefki, which would be the Pokemon for floor 25, as it's the 450 BST Pokemon that cannot evolve. 
And then our two final Pokemon ended up becoming Ursaluna, which counts as the floor 55 slot. And finally, Magmortar, which counts as the floor 95 slot, rounding out our official IV team. I hope my explanations have helped you guys a lot because clearly I got mixed up during the run itself, which is already just embarrassing. But we, of course, dominate all the floors ahead of us extremely easily, and it was time to fight Finn on floor 145. And we're on floor 145 with our rival, Finn. Now, we are technically even. Our team is even, which is actually gonna make this really exciting. I'm gonna be honest. I'm actually kind of excited for this fight. Dragon Breath, get rid of the, ooh. Okay. Tatsugiri with the Outrage. I'm gonna Oblivion Wing and heal off that, honestly. I'm kinda hyped. I'm kinda hyped. We are exactly the same team wise. I don't have a Mega Rayquaza, which he will have eventually the next time we see him, which sucks a little bit, but that's fine. Paralyzed Rayquaza, beautiful. He's gonna get rid of it. He has Lumberry. Hyper Beam. Ouch. That hurt a lot. That hurt a lot. We're going to Oblivion Wing and try to keep our Charizard in this. Oh. oh, that's so beautiful. That's so hot. That's sexy. Charizard, you're disgusting, bro. What a disgusting, broken Pokemon with that Beast Boost, bro. It's just, he's going to be able to just sweep the team now. Surely. Like, completely sweep. I would like to maybe swap my Dynamax Band for a Mega Bracelet and the Terra Crystal Ball thing. Because then we could really try to get just like our rival. Get Mega Rayquaza and get the, the rest of the team tarot up. Like our starter tarot up fire and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Is what I totally would want to do the most of all. But probably not going to happen. The amount of luck to do that for the last 40 or last like 50 floors. I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? We don't have any shinies. So our luck isn't that boosted. Um... We'll see what happens, but hey, we're technically even and we just beat them on 145. That's pretty big. I think we're seeing a run of Ivy and our rival beating Poke Rogue. I think we're on the way. And now that our team is fully complete, all we had to do was survive and push to the very top, which is pretty easy for our team. We get through all the floors extremely easily, try to gather the most amount of money and items to make sure our team was looking phenomenal. We did have some rough battles though, like on floor 165, the rematch against Giovanni. He tried giving us a little bit of trouble, but our Ivy team just proved to be too powerful for him. I mean, even his Mewtwo couldn't do anything to us. How sad. But we climbed through these floors bit by bit, pushing all the way to the 180s, which would be our next hurdle, a random champion with their own Elite Four team. But before that starts, we got some insane luck. Right before we fight our first Elite Four member, we get Max Mushrooms, giving it straight to Charizard. We got G Max Charizard. That's fire. I don't know if anybody else could do it on the team. Because I remember I had some comments beforehand saying that you can actually swap the G Max mushrooms onto other pokemon and they'll get the buff too don't know if that's the case anymore or maybe if that was just a bug at that time malva you're about to get slammed by g max charizard either way you're gonna get slammed you're done sister you're absolutely done and of course we absolutely destroy malva extremely easily with our g max charizard but look i swear if i wasn't recording this people would tell me i'm hacking because right after we defeated her we actually got I got another set of Max Mushrooms. No. Bro. This is quite literally one of the most insane runs I've ever had. Genuinely. This is such an insane run as Ivy. Why did Ivy... Like, you know how the story with Ivy goes? It's like, oh, we've actually been training you to beat Eternatus. Only you could do it. It seems like, Ivy, you could have done it yo yourself right now. I'm not going to jinx myself. Hopefully, we can actually get up to Eternatus and win. But as of right now, sister, it's looking like you could have done all of it yourself. <laughs> that is insane. We're going to make sure to heal because we don't want any chances of losing um, 
to any Elite Four members. There's still no joke. Like, Seabold here. But this is crazy. What a monumental run right now. I still can't believe we got two max mushrooms back to back like that. Probably my best luck I've had on a classic run so far. But at this point, we were on a generational run. Nothing was stopping us. Of course, we defeat Seabold like nothing. His water Pokemon were no match for us. And after that, we went on to our next Elite Four, Wilkstra, which is a steel type trainer. And I mean, come on, what'd you think was gonna happen? We lost. I'm lying. Of course, we melted his Pokemon with Flamethrower. And after that, we had Drasna, who is a dragon type trainer and tried to do something against us. But of course, we had Dragon Breath on our Charizard and Rayquaza ready for action. So she gets taken care of. And finally, the champion Diantha was all that was left, which she does have a strong team. I mean, she has Xerneas and Mega Gardevoir, but still, our team could just handle her so easily. I mean, at this point, we truly were the embodiment of rival Ivy, just slamming everyone. Which brings us to the 190s for our final set of floors. And we pushed the floor 195 for our final battle against Finn. We've made it to floor 195. Beautiful team setup against Finn to show that Finn here, that Ivy is superior. You got Infernape every single time you swapped out into Tatsugiri. You proved me right, buddy. And I absolutely love you for that. Truly, you are a beautiful, beautiful Pokemon trainer for that. Get Tatsugiri out of here. Who's next? Now, his G-Max Charizard is... Or, not G-Max. His Mega Rayquaza is what I was thinking. Is still very dangerous. Since it's out this early is a good sign. I'm honestly just going to bring in Mag Mortar and just do some chip. Out of, yep, out of see, pure fear of something like that. Because that is scary. Something like that is intensely scary. Um, I'm going to bring in our Rayquaza and just go Rayquaza v Rayquaza and see what happens. Outrage. Stone Edge. Ouch. Okay. Our Stone Edge did big damage, though, which is amazing. But I don't think I go first next. It restored and it Stone Edged again. That is rough. That's rough on us for sure. I'm going to swap in Klefki. Set up spikes. Yep, that's what we need. Spike set up right there. Uh, let's go back to Charizard. Now we got Infernape out here. Scorching Sands don't even affect me, buddy. Are you going to swap, though? I think you are. Ooh, you're not. Oh, you're such a freak. You're such a freak for that, dude. Is he going to swap now? No, he stays in here. So I'm going to Earth Power. This is good. And you're confused. Maybe this kills? Okay, good, 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 good. Um, I'm a little worried still. His Rayquaza is still in the picture. I'm just going to Oblivion Wing and get as much HP as possible like that. Because we need it. We need HP. We need Charizard to live. If Charizard dies, there's a chance we can lose this. And I'm not trying to do that. Have you, do we win with Dragon Breath? It's a low hitting move. Stone Edge. The Mysterious Air Current. Wait, what did, what did that say? Mysterious Air Current did what? Did that help me or help him? I, it went. The text went by too fast. I don't know what it said. I guess I'll find out when I'm editing. Whether or not that helped me. But that might have actually helped me. The Wind Current with his Stone Edge. Oh my gosh, we lived on 3 HP. That was actually bonkers. Bonkers, bruv. Actually, 72 HP is crazy to have right now. And we got the floor. Just we're just gonna oblivion wing. Beautiful, and we won. We are the better rival, buddy. We are going to Eternatus and taking him down. Truly, bro, ain't nothing to me. Give me your 13k. I'm gonna use my whole. I'm gonna use all that to heal the whole team. Sacred, I don't even care. Sacred Ash, look at that. Full HP. Team's looking beautiful. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna bring you up. And then we're just going to X defense for our fight all the way up. Screamtail, I don't got time to mess with you right now. You need to get out of my face. We're going to get to Eternatus. Finally. I haven't been to Eternatus in so long in one of these challenge videos. Man, it feels good. And we did it. We actually beat Finn as a rival Ivy. All those times of our rival ending our run short, we were able to provide some sort of payback by just slamming Finn into the ground. It felt so amazing but now the true test of this challenge 
can we beat Eternatus? And we've done it. Foe Eternatus appears. Though perhaps it can be counted to be precise. This isn't exactly your 5,640- Shut up, Eternatus. I ain't got time for that. You gotta lose today, buddy. You're losing today, buddy. Honestly, I might swap out and instantly just go off rip with my own Rayquaza. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Look at that. That's how that's how much of an ego I'm feeling right now. Maybe it's a dumb move. It might be, but look, it already swaps out. That's fine with me, bucko. That's fine with me. Ain't a problem. Ain't a problem. I didn't realize my Rayquaza is not level 200 yet. That's actually kind of funny. We're gonna hone claws here. Oh. Okay. He said, get your Rayquaza out of here. I get it. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I really don't. Um. Honestly, I'm gonna get Klefki out there right now. Ooh, I forgot he got Black Hole like that. And we're just gonna start. It's time to throw hands now, buddy. Truly, it's time to throw hands. We're just gonna drill back. Ooh, that flamethrower. That that does hurt. And, ooh, okay, okay, that also may be a problem as well. Um, draining kiss. And um, honestly, it might be worth hone clawing again, just to get that free. You know what I'm saying? Okay, honestly, Draining Kiss might not even be worth it again. Because you're probably going to die next hit. But we're going to do it for now. Um, Drill Peck again. Flamethrower. Oh, good job. G-Max Corviknight, bro. Beautiful. It avoided the Draining Kiss? Is that what happened there? Or what my uh, Clef Key's doing? That's kind of crazy. Dynamax Cannon. Okay, so he's got to rest now. But he's got to take a little, little napsy because of it. Usually. He has to, which is good for us. I think, honestly, we take out G-Max Charizard and we try to finish this as quickly as possible. Dragon Breath would normally be the move, but honestly, I think Earth Power might actually be the better move. Goodbye, Klefki. You were a chosen one. I think Earth Power might be a better vibe. Yeah, Earth Power is going to do some crazy damage. It's honestly going to do some crazy damage. I'm going to bring Ursa Luna in, and we're just going to... Actually, we're gonna we're gonna keep the play rough here. Cross poison. It's an interesting move to use there, buddy. He avoided the attack. Okay. See, that's my only problem. We're, honestly, I'm gonna headlong rush that. He took my shell bell. What a bum! Just to guarantee our hundred percent accuracy, because buddy's trying to mess with us right now, and we ain't we ain't about that. And we're just gonna headlong. Oh, look at that head. Ursa Luna! Yes, buddy! Yes! This is what I'm talking about. Earth Power honestly isn't doing as much as I would like, though. And why is the buddy using... He's gaining HP back with my Shell Bell. You are disrespectful. You are very disrespectful. Why is my Charizard doing, like, no damage? My Charizard is being booty. I'm getting carried by Ursa Luna. What am I talking about? He took my Flame Orb. That's honestly... That actually helps me. But he also has two Lumberries, so... Goodbye, Ursa Luna. That was... It was eventually gonna happen. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. That was eventually going to happen. Oh, uh, something about Scoplets? And he got burned. You hate to see it, but it'll heal. It'll heal. It'll heal. You'll be fine. Um, Honestly, yeah. We're just going to Flamethrower you, and then we are going to... I'm going to Earth Power. Cross Poison. We're chilling. We're actually chilling. I think we win. Guys, oh, it died by burn. Okay, it died by burn because it took my flame orb and you deserved it. Ivy, why? Why was the rival this entire time saying I was training up us as the player to be the one? Oh, you won? I guess I should have known, but you're back now. It's over. You ended the loop. You fulfilled your dream too, didn't you? You didn't even lose even once. Not at all. I'm the only one who remember who will remember what you did. I guess that's okay, isn't it? Your legend will always live on in our hearts. Anyway, I've had about enough of this place, haven't you? Let's head home. Maybe when we get back, we can have another battle if you're up to it. Get out of my face. Oh, it's a different artwork too. That's really cool. Compared to the Ivy one that you could win instead. That's cool. So we went with both 
Styles. We won as Ivy. Ivy could have done it herself this whole time. She didn't need us. She was more than capable. That's so cool. And now we're getting a bunch of egg vouchers for that. We did it. I haven't been in a classic mode challenge run for these videos in so long. I honestly don't even remember the last time I won. I actually don't. I'm so happy right now. We actually did it. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for today's video. I'm so happy, bro. I've wanted to do this video since, like, probably, I don't even know, bro, like, video two of Poke Rogue on the channel. Like, somebody commented it. I talked about it on stream, and we had good ideas, but I had to wait until I got Rayquaza as a egg Pokemon and had to wait until I got a starter down to one point only to fit them in the 10-point option because, I mean... The chance of finding Rayquaza in your run or a starter is honestly extremely low. We did find some starters. I found Torterra and Meganium, I think, in this run. So we did do that. Obviously, never found a Rayquaza. So we kind of had to do the Ivy run in that fashion. In a perfect world, we would start with a random starter Pokemon and a random regional bird and go from there. And we would follow the exact same steps as the rival. That would be the proper route. But it's okay. We made it to here, and I'm happy. I think it was fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you guys don't think it was kind of bummy having to start with Rayquaza first. But look, you can't blame me. It's the only way we're going to confirm that we could be Ivy 100%. You know what I'm saying? But hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have a couple more Poke Rogue videos planned. There's two that I really wanted to do, but it's near impossible to do. I want to do Rival Paul, but you need Electabuzz. You need Electivire. That's like his That's like his main. I still haven't hatched an Elekid or found an Electivire. I'm going to have to play like Endless and try to find one because I just have it. I want to do that. Can't do it. And I want to do Cynthia really bad. But her Pokemon are so strong. They're really bad early game. And I've tried it and I get slammed by like floor 40, 50. Like I haven't been able to push that threshold of her Garchomp, her Togekiss, like her Spirit Tune. Those are just really strong Pokemon that are hard to start the game off with. Especially because I have no egg moves with them either. So... Those are two struggle ones. I'll get to those eventually, but I have other ones to hold off in the meantime that we'll do in hopes to eventually be able to do one of those two videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow for our daily YouTube video grind. I think this is video 11, 12. I don't know. We got 50 of them to do and all the way up until the end of September when I go to TwitchCon. So 50 daily YouTube videos, high quality content. Make sure you're subscribed, like the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Dab on them.